This is an example of partial equilibrium versus general equilibrium analysis. Uh, and I'll say for this course, we won't get into general equilibrium modeling at all. Uh, but I think it's still valuable to be aware of what that phrase means and in practice to think about whether there are important general equilibrium uh, effects, or at least potential effects, um, that if you don't model them could potentially bias your results. So to make things concrete, imagine we're interested in a policy that would provide free public child care, and we're interested in the causal effect of that uh, policy on uh, employment, in particular, of the children's mothers. mothers. Um, so in the partial equilibrium analysis, usually what we would do is we will consider how mothers would respond in terms of their uh, choice to try to find a job or not if we just consider that uh, basically all the prices in different markets are fixed. So in this particular case, we would have a fixed childcare price, um, or you know potentially you could have different types of childcare, maybe like a higher quality and lower quality. Um, but you would imagine we're just keeping those prices fixed, and also. In this case, of course, wages are important for the mother's decision about uh, employment decision. So we might, for the partial equilibrium, also just imagine wages are fixed. And then we could estimate some model given the current prices of childcare and current wages for different jobs. Uh, and then use that to try to estimate how providing free child care would uh, affect mother's employment. In contrast, general equilibrium would, uh, you know, is more ambitious, so it would try to model uh, how potentially having this free public child care might change prices in the child care market, right? So, low price changes. And it's maybe not totally clear which direction they would change. You can imagine maybe by having a sort of free public option, then the remaining private child cares would try to go for the higher quality. Uh, so the private prices might actually go up as a result, uh, or potentially just because there's more competition, prices might go down. Uh, but the idea is, you know, these whatever remaining private child cares would probably respond uh, on the price dimension um, to this free public child care option. And the general equilibrium approach would try to uh, model that somehow. Um, and then also allow uh, wage changes. So you could also imagine, you know, if we suddenly have lots of free childcare, and uh, if 
hypothetically that does increase uh, the the labor force participation of mothers, then if we have our you know, labor market and we have say price and quantity, and we have our supply and demand. Um, and then suddenly the um, supply, sorry, I realize I usually draw the axes differently. Anyway, if suddenly uh, people, there's more supply, the supply curve shifts, um, then we'll tend to have lower prices, right? Um, so we would have, I guess, something like that, where the price was there, and now, uh, so price being wage in the labor market. Um, so, you know, depending on how big this effect is of the free child care on mother's employment, it could be important to model how that changes the labor market itself and changes wages, which then would feed back on the mother's uh decisions about employment. So again, the specifics are not the important part, just trying to understand partial equilibrium is sort of keeping uh, different prices and wages fixed versus trying to model them more generally, um, which is more difficult and maybe requires more assumptions. Uh, but if you get a model that you find plausible, then it is more uh, powerful and more general in terms of allowing uh, more different kinds of causal effects and uh, how they can interact.